Ever thought the world of cycling would be better without the humble derailleur hanger? Well, SRAM certainly do, and their brand new 12-speed T-Type Eagle transmissions do away with them entirely and mount the rear derailleur directly onto the frame. But aren't derailleur hangers there to protect your frame and derailleur in a crash by bending or breaking? Surely if you mount the derailleur directly to the frame, that's a recipe for disaster. And is this compatible with existing SRAM Eagle parts? Well, that last one is basically a no, but we know you'll have a whole lot more questions about these new drivetrains. To answer them, we'll be diving headfirst into the key tech takeaways and giving you a full review on the XX drivetrain. So get comfy and prepare to absorb everything you need to know about SRAM T-Type. Eight years in the making and T-Type Eagle transmissions have officially been released. And although the big news, as I said earlier, is that they ditched the ubiquitous derailleur hanger, they also wave goodbye to conventional limit and B-tension adjustment screws. SRAM changed the mountain bike world forever when they introduced their XX1 1x11 drivetrain a decade ago. And just three years later, they moved the bar higher again with their Eagle 1x12 systems. In 2019, Eagle went wireless with SRAM's Axis technology, and now they're ready to reinvent drivetrains again. SRAM says the innovative direct mount design, which sees the derailleur clamp the bike frame at the rear axle, is the biggest product introduction in their history. According to SRAM, the aim of this overhaul is to dramatically improve shifting under load and improve the ease of use and setup. T-Type is a holistic system that includes all parts of a drivetrain, where each part has been designed to work together. We can hear the moans in the comments already, but yes, that does mean the new system isn't compatible with any of the current generation Eagle drivetrain parts. The only exception is the current generation Axis controller and battery, as well as the new Axis pod controller, which can be used with both generations. You'll also need a bike that's compatible with SRAM's universal derailleur hanger, also known as UDH. So if your bike doesn't, then tough luck, this won't fit your bike. So if you want to experience T-Type, at best you're going to have to pony up for an entirely new drivetrain, and at worst, a whole new bike. Speaking of new, SRAM is introducing not one, but three levels of T-Type transmission. XXSL, designed to be the lightest, highest performing group set, XX, which sports burlier components, and XO, a slightly more affordable version. Now, before everybody in the comments reaches for their pitchforks, slightly more affordable is the key term there, as none of these new groups are what you would call cheap. A complete XO transmission like the one we have here will set you back £1,715 or $1,599. XX ramps it up to £2,195 or $2,049 and the range topping XX SL is a mind boggling £2,890 or $2,699 if purchased with the optional power meter. But that's enough about the price, what we really want to know is what makes these new drivetrains tick, so let's take a closer look. While the whole Eagle ecosystem has been redesigned with T-Type, it's the rear derailleur that grabs the headlines with its striking new design. Removing the need for a derailleur hanger means it mounts directly to the frame using SRAM's hangerless interface at the rear wheel axle. SRAM calls this full mount, which replaces the hanger with its machined aluminium struts clamping the frame from either side. The full mount design has allowed SRAM to remove the derailleur's limit and B-tension adjustment screws, as it eliminates variations in distance between the derailleur and cassette. No variation means no need for these adjustments, simplifying the setup process. Just like the old Eagle Axis though, you can make micro adjustments using the Axis Pod Controller or Axis Smartphone app to trim the derailleur inboard and outboard to fine tune the derailleur's position on the cassette. All the derailleurs feature a cage mode button, which was known as cage lock on SRAM's previous derailleurs. It's used to hold the cage forward for taking out the rear wheel, 
and a secondary position called the setup key which is needed during installation. Putting the derailleur in the setup key position and engaging the dedicated setup cassette sprocket makes getting the correct gap between the derailleur and cassette possible and eliminates the need for B-tension adjustment. The setup key means the derailleur's chain can accommodate differing chain lengths which will vary from bike to bike given differing suspension designs and chainstay lengths. SRAM has produced a chain length chart which uses chainstay length and chainring size to define the ideal number of chain links for any given bike. If this sounds complicated, then we can tell you that in practice, it's actually a whole lot easier than setting up previous Eagle drivetrains. Okay, given that the derailleur is now mounted directly to the frame, it had better be tough. According to SRAM, the T-Type derailleur design delivers unprecedented robustness. Like the current generation Eagle Axis drivetrains, the new derailleurs feature SRAM's overload clutch. This basically protects the rear derailleur's motor and gearbox during hard impacts. For T-Type though, SRAM has also introduced a number of additional protective measures to help prevent damage as well as modular parts that can be replaced if they do get damaged beyond repair. A skid plate on the derailleur's widest portion is user replaceable, while the parallelogram's lower and upper outer links can also be replaced. The cage can also be removed and replaced with no tools required, as it simply unscrews from the derailleur's P-knuckle. As they have removed the limit screws, SRAM have built-in fail-safes to stop the chain falling into the back wheel or from jamming into the frame. The derailleur also sits 10mm further inboard compared to the older Eagle Axis versions, to further reduce the chance of impact damage. While the clutch is unfortunately still unadjustable, it is now integrated into the cage, so it can be removed or replaced at the same time. XXSL and XX also feature the clever new Magic Wheel. Magic Wheel refers to the lower jockey wheel and allows the toothed outer portion of the wheel to rotate independently from the spoke center section. If something blocks the pulley, the outer portion will continue to rotate, reducing the chance of chain jam and damage. The XO version, however, does without this and uses a regular lower pulley wheel instead. The other big change for T-Type is the controller. Rather than mimic a conventional shifter like the old Axis controller, the new Axis pod controllers take on their own identity. Rather than using a rocker paddle, they use two buttons mounted one above the other. Like the old controller though, the pod's buttons can be customised in the Axis app to perform different tasks. You can choose which button moves the derailleur up or down the cassette, or if the bike has them, control the reverb axis dropper post or flight attendant suspension. Two versions of the controller are available, with the ultimate model getting interchangeable concave or convex buttons. Like the derailleurs, the pods are modular, so if you break a clamp or the electronic portion of the pod, they can easily be replaced. The axis pods come with two mounting options, the infinity clamp and the bridge clamp. As the name suggests, the Infinity Clamp is in a figure of 8 shape. The pod's mounting interface is the same diameter as that of a handlebar, so it can be mounted either way around for extra adjustment. The bridge clamp replaces SRAM's Matchmaker X direct mount system, but functions similarly, with sliding adjustment from side to side rather than two fixed positions as before. One complaint about older Eagle cassettes was the large jump up from the second largest to the largest sprocket, and this was only exasperated when SRAM introduced their wider 10-52 tooth options. T-Type aims to alleviate this, with closer jumps between the cogs towards the top of the cassette. The second and third biggest cogs are now both larger by two teeth, at 38 and 44 teeth respectively. SRAM claims the cassette and new flat top chain have been designed to dramatically improve shifting performance under power. The new cassettes now use SRAM's alternating teeth thickness X-Sync pattern, and the flat top chain fits on the cassette in a very specific way. The cassette also has shift lanes that either permit or block the chain from shifting into the next gear. SRAM claims it shifts perfectly under load, even withstanding a 1000 watt surge of power on your EMTB in a full sprint. The cassette is also built around the 55mm chain line of the new crankset, which should help to improve its wear life thanks to the less extreme angle between the cassette and chainring. 
SRAM claims the chains are the strongest it has ever produced and takes styling cues from their road bike chains with a flat top portion. But while they look similar, the two are not cross compatible. There's an awful lot going on with the three levels of chains and cassettes in the range. So for full details, check out the news story in the link in the description below. Perhaps the area with the most subtle changes are with the cranks and chain rings. The big news here is the introduction of more power meter options, but we'll get to those soon enough. Starting with the cranks, these are still based around SRAM's dub bottom bracket standard, but see a few changes to their construction. The biggest change to the cranks is the swap from its 3 bolt direct mount style chainring to the 8 bolt system found on its road cranks. Despite sharing the name, the X-Sync chainring teeth profile is updated to work with the new flat top chains. In a real throwback to the noughties, the XX and XO chainrings are compatible with a removable and replaceable two position bash guard. All of the crank sets are now also power meter compatible. This is either in the form of a chainring based power meter in the case of XXSL or Quark's power meter which is found inside the crank axle spindle for XO and XX. There's enough tech with the cranks and power meters for a whole other video. So if you want all the details, check out the link in the description. Now we've got all of the tech out of the way, we know you're aching to know how it performs on the trail. So let's get to it. So then, does T-Type live up to the hype and its enormous price tag? To find out, we've spent the last six months racking up over a thousand kilometers of riding and 35,000 meters of climbing and descending on the XX group set. We'll be logging even more miles on the XO group on the new proof behind me as well. The XX group has been through the ringer during a typically Scottish Tweed Valley winter and all the cold, wet and frozen weather that brings with a welcome sprinkling of dust, sand and rocks thrown in for good measure. Safe to say our T-Type transmission has had an incredibly thorough workout. Let's start with the big one, the full mount rear derailleur. We've received many legitimate comments from people saying that removing the derailleur hanger from the design is a recipe for a very, very expensive disaster. However, in our experience, you really need not worry. The test sample derailleur has been banned, knocked, bashed and dragged through the rough stuff every time we've ridden it. Although it's showing obvious cosmetic signs of its hard life, functionally it retains its day one performance. Any concerns about damage to the frame or derailleur caused by not having a sacrificial hanger are totally unfounded. The derailleur still feels solid, shifting as it did when it was brand new. The pulley wheels are free of slop and play, while the teeth don't show any signs of significant wear. Clearly, SRAM's focus on durability hasn't been in vain. It might not be the low maintenance gearbox game changer the comments will be screaming out for, but as derailleurs go, it's as tough as they come. When it comes to shifting performance, SRAM's claims definitely ring true. Shifts are quick, crisp, and simply incredible under load. The relationship between pod controller button push and derailleur actuation is instantaneous and precise. Thanks to the derailleur shift mapping and the cassette shift ramps, we've not experienced a single miss or failed shift during our testing period. The derailleur changes gear in the same way every single time. Shifts are also impressively quiet. Instead of backing off the pedals during a shift, it arguably shifts even smoother and quieter under power. Shifting like this requires a relearning of how to shift, but this feels natural very quickly and means you can continue to hammer the pedals, keeping your pace high on climbs and sprints. Dumping most or all of the gears at once, however, isn't possible with T-Type. This is notable in a work stand. The cassette shift ramps and the derailleur's cassette mapping stop it from selecting the next gear until it is ready to do so, making shifts seem slightly delayed. Out on the trail though, this was undetectable. Even successive quick shifts certainly don't feel lethargic. It's safe to say that shifting performance has definitely stepped up quite a few levels. The clutch is now much stronger than SRAM's previous drivetrains, making the whole bike quieter. Testament to its increased control, we didn't drop a single chain during the whole testing period, despite the We Are One arrival not having a chain device. 
The same could not be said of older Eagle drivetrains, where a chain device was often a necessity. The derailleur on its own makes a strong case for making T-Type the new benchmark for mountain bike drivetrains. But the derailleur isn't the only thing that makes it special. The pod controllers have great tactility, especially compared to the previous generation axis shifters. Its large, chunky buttons are easy to find and feel. SRAM has also increased the button click threshold, eliminating accidental shifting on rough terrain. We like that the buttons on the Pod Ultimate can be replaced as well, adding a degree of customization and repairability. Bringing the third and second largest sprockets closer together to the biggest one means we found them way more usable compared to Eagle drivetrain cassettes while climbing. This brings the usability of SRAM's T-type cassette ratios very close to that of Shimano's 12-speed offerings, which is only a good thing. Chain and cassette wear appears to be minimal, with the cassette showing no signs of scoring or damage by shifting. The polished teeth help reduce the signs of wear too. Using a chain wear tool, the T-Type chain shows zero signs of wear compared to a brand new one. Very impressive after such an intensive testing period. Moving on to the cranks, they have proven themselves to be plenty tough enough for hard riding, brushing off rock strikes and general use. The 3M protective tape has started to show signs of wear, but some of our test team are notorious for rubbing cranks and frames with their feet, so it may not be as much of an issue for you. While we couldn't scientifically test crank strength or stiffness, they feel solid and stiff underfoot. The chainring and bash guards are incredibly robust, with its teeth not becoming hooked or damaged during the test period. Hard, high force stops and bashes onto rocks and fallen tree trunks haven't resulted in any damage or deformation of the ring or its bash guard components. Does the new T-Type transmission live up to SRAM's lofty claims? Having spent a lot of time and energy testing it, we've truly struggled to find any faults. This makes T-Type a giant leap forward in terms of performance, functionality, durability and simplicity of use and installation. Previously, Shimano drivetrains offered the best on and off power shifting compared to SRAM's Eagle Axis drivetrain offerings. That's now been flipped with T-Type. Shifts are class leading whether you're hard on the pedals or not, toppling Shimano from their on power top spot. Although SRAM hasn't ripped up the drivetrain rulebook, T-Type still uses a derailleur with a chain and cassette after all and not a gearbox. The brand has refined and improved upon almost every detail. SRAM has recalibrated how riders should expect their drivetrains to work and feel and how long they should last. There is a cost to this level of performance though. T-Type's asking price is undoubtedly eye-watering. No backwards compatibility with Eagle drivetrains means accessing T-Type performance will require a full house upgrade, and this could be very prohibitive for some. Is the performance worth the cost? We say undoubtedly yes. But we'd love to know what you think about the new T-Type transmissions. Is the price a step too far or would you pay the premium for the performance on offer? Please let us know what you think in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, throw us a like, hit the bell icon and we'll see you in the next video.